The purpose of this video is to demonstrate how to conduct TP201.1E. Although TP201.1E is titled as one test procedure, it is actually a series of four different tests, which are positive leak rate, positive cracking pressure, negative leak rate, and negative cracking pressure. When testing vacuum assist systems, this test is required to be done immediately after the clean air separator test and prior to the torque test. Each of the four tests must be conducted in a sequence as they are listed in the test procedure in order to be considered valid. As always, please be reminded the PV valve must be certified and installed on the test assembly per the test procedure. When conducting the PV valve test, the tester ensures all test equipment meets the specifications of TP201.1E. For example, the digital pressure manometer must have a maximum full range scale of 0 to 20 inches water column. Additionally, the tester also ensures the flow meters and digital manometers are calibrated once every 180 days and maintains the calibration records with the test equipment. After ensuring the digital manometer is properly calibrated, the tester then turns on the manometer and allows it to warm up. Once the manometer is warm, the tester then zeroes out the device. Prior to installing the PV valve on the test assembly, the tester first leak checks the test stand. This leak check is done by installing a 2-inch cap on the test stand riser using pipe sealant or Teflon tape. The tester then establishes a stable gauge pressure between 18.00 to 20.00 inches water column and allows the pressure to stabilize. Once pressure is stabilized, the tester then checks for leaks by applying a leak detection solution and looking for bubbles and pressure changes that may identify a leak. If no bubbles form and there are no pressure changes, the test stand is leak tight. After successfully leak checking the test assembly, the tester then installs the PV valve on the stand using pipe sealant or Teflon tape. Here, the tester also ensures the valve is installed in the test assembly at the required torque ranges specified in the applicable executive order. In this case, the tester is conducting a test on a Husky 5885 valve which has a required torque of 20 to 50 foot-pounds. After installing the valve, the tester shows the valve has been torqued within the allowable range. The tester is now ready to begin the first test in the series of four, the positive leak rate test. The tester here starts by introducing nitrogen and maintaining a steady pressure between 1.95 to 2.05 inches water column for a full 10 seconds. If a flow rate in excess of 0.05 cubic feet per hour is needed to maintain the pressure between 1.95 to 2.05 inches water column, the test fails. The second test in the series is the positive cracking pressure test and begins here when the tester introduces nitrogen into the PV valve at a flow rate of exactly 120 milliliters per minute. Once flow is stabilized, the tester then closes a bypass valve to route the flow into the test assembly. The tester then looks for a sudden drop in pressure and records the highest pressure achieved. This highest pressure achieved is referred to as the cracking pressure. The cracking pressure is not between 2.5 to 6.0 inches water column. The test fails. The third test in the series is the negative leak rate test. The tester begins here by opening the control valve on the negative flow metering device and introducing nitrogen until the pressure stabilizes between 3.95 to 4.05 inches water column for 10 seconds. If a flow rate in excess of 0.21 cubic feet per hour is needed to maintain the pressure between 3.95 and 4.05 inches water column, the test fails. The fourth and final test in the series is a negative cracking pressure test and begins when the tester introduces nitrogen into the PV valve at a flow rate of exactly 200 milliliters per minute. Once flow is stabilized, the tester then closes the bypass valve to route the flow into the test assembly. The tester then looks for a sudden drop in vacuum and records the highest vacuum achieved. This highest vacuum achieved is referred to as a cracking pressure. If the cracking pressure is not between negative 6.0 to negative 10.0 inches water column, the test fails. The final step of the procedure is shown here and the tester reinstalls the PV valve in the vent pipe using pipe sealant or Teflon tape. The tester then ensures the valve is installed in the vent pipe at the torque ranges specified in the applicable executive order. 
As stated earlier, the valve tested was a Husky 5885 PV valve with a torque setting of 20 to 50 foot pounds. As you can see here, the tester has reinstalled the valve within the proper ranges and the system is now back in a certified configuration. The District 3 test witnessing has compiled this list of common mistakes made by testers when conducting TP201.1E. The first common mistake has been the testing of a new valve rather than the valve that has been in place. Other mistakes are failing to leak check the test assembly or installing the PV valve on the test assembly or vent pipe outside the required torque settings. Additionally, the district has found testers using improper test equipment. Specifically, testers have used the same manometer for the drop tube integrity test for TP201.1E, which does not meet the equipment specifications for the PV valve test. Testers have also been observed introducing nitrogen outside the required flow rates. Finally, the district has observed testers not conducting the four tests in the following order. Positive leak rate, positive cracking pressure, negative leak rate, and negative cracking pressure. Failing to conduct the tests in this order will invalidate the tests. Please be aware that testers must complete the entire series of four tests even if any of the four tests fail. For example, if the positive leak rate fails, testers must complete the remaining three tests of the series before any repairs are made.